Everyone, let's continue the discussion here on the markets front. Recession fears and rate hikes, they've weighed heavily on growth stocks. But for small and mid-cap stocks, it's been brutal. Joining us now to discuss, we've got Ariel Investments Vice President and Client Portfolio Manager, Dan and Kirby. Dan, great to have you here with us today. Uh, first and foremost, when you think about the market narrative that we've seen kind of transition over the course of this year, it's gone from transitory inflation to naughty inflation, as some might call it, but even more so inflation that is very much still here and is going to be persistent in the near term. Yeah, so look, the, the, there's been a changing narrative across the year, as you alluded to, um, overall, of course, first we start the year with the fact that it's going to be transitory inflation, the Fed still believed it, we not necessarily so, and then of course now we have an aggressive Fed that uh, risks sort of squeezing the life out of the economy um, with the uh, aggressive rate, rate rises, and thus you have rising recessionary f- fears amongst you know broader Americans who right now are facing you know challenges in the housing market, challenges at pain at the pump. Um, so there's a lot of fear in the marketplace, and inflation is largely to blame. Um, Dana, I don't even know if it's possible to answer this question. What's worse, high inflation or higher rates? What is more detrimental both for consumer spending on the one hand, but also corporate profitability on the other? I, I'm, I'm going to say, and I, you know, at, at risk of, of making some people a little bit upset, I'm going to say higher inflation is the bigger risk, right? Um, higher inflation and once sort of inflation expectations become on moored and people just believe that prices are going to get ever higher and higher and higher, then you have things happening in the marketplace such as a, a wage price spiral and things that really uh, can't get under control. So what the Fed's really attempting to do at this point in time is to engineer sort of the soft landing or find the middle ground between an acceptable level of inflation um, and less sort of pain in the overall economy. Um, as one of your guests said earlier, you know, that's a, it's a really challenging environment um, for there to be in, and the track record hasn't been that great um, over time. But still, Jerome Powell and the rest of the folks at the Federal Reserve um, continue to remain data dependent, and they pivot when the data uh, changes as well. So, Dan, if the Fed is going to stay in this inflation fighting mindset for the balance of this year, maybe even into early next year, does one continue to shun growth stocks and favor value? Uh, absolutely. Look, if you're looking for you know longer duration uh, growth stocks that are out there, and sure they've gotten absolutely pummeled uh, this year. Of course, evaluations had been uh, way too high. Um, I'd say you need to look at value based equities, uh, organizations that are generating their cash flow uh, closer to today versus out in the future. Um, even though we've seen some sort of pullback in in consumer discretionary names, in energy and whatnot over the last couple of weeks, value is still the place to be. Um, even if you're looking at growth to mid cap to small cap value. And if you're actually looking at the valuations of small cap value, well, right now, relative to to growth names on large cap in, that's really where an allocator should be with their portfolio overall. And even though they've gotten absolutely smashed this year as far as price declines, um, some of those statistics that you you looked at earlier from Truist are absolutely true and even more so true for small cap value. Do you expect some of the earnings estimates to start coming down and and particularly here with regard to what you were just mentioning and how people might be able to position their portfolio right now as we're, we're watching tech too you know what should somebody's time horizon at minimum be if they're looking at even kind of playing within tech at this point in time if you're looking for plate in tech, if you're looking for any investments within the equity sphere, your time horizon needs to be much longer than just a year. Anything can happen in a year, as we have seen. So if you're if you're thinking about investing in equities, um, you need to have at least a three to five year time horizon. That's what we do every day. Um, I liked the segment earlier um, where we were talking about sort of the you know the the sun eventually comes out, right? Um, and you need to have that longer time horizon and ability to hold. It's again about time in the market, and that's a very important component for making equity investments. What if you don't have that time or what if you can't have that time? I mean, is there anything in the shorter term that is going to be able to work? I think one of the things that that works in the shorter term is cash, right? So you're going to have some damage from inflation with where they're at right uh, today, uh, but that is sort of the has the most optionality for ability to jump in the market at any point in time. If you are someone who is close to retirement or has been close to retirement, I would have hoped that you would have followed the glide path towards lower duration um, bonds. But even some low duration asset backed securities are, are good investments that you can find in various bond funds. Um, if you do still have some time, say you're you know seven or, or five 
five years away from retirement, equity investments at the valuations that you're getting today look pretty good um, for uh, those you know, retirees or close to retirees. Dane and Kirby, Ariel Investments, Vice President and Client Portfolio Manager. Good to see you. We'll talk to you soon. Thanks for having me.